Um, hello, my name is Ken, and this is my brother William. Um, we're going to talk about our animation and illustration company. Um, first of all, I'd like to talk about how I got started. And I did the traditional thing of going off to art college. Um, I went and did a foundation course in Bath, and then did a 3D design course in Portsmouth. And on the 3D design course, I learned uh, stuff about set design, and also managed to stumble on, a, on the illustration side of the course, which was my first introduction to computer graphics. And after leaving college, I came back home and found a place in Derry called the Nerve Centre. And they ran um, courses in filmmaking and music technology, but they were interested in getting into multimedia. So I just happened along at the right time. I also learned my 3D animation software up there, which is the one I use is called Softimize. You'll have seen it on films like Jurassic Park and um, Magic Roundabout and a lot of the Japanese movies that you'll have seen, like um, Howl's Moving Castle. It was using those. Um, yeah, so Star Wars as well, wasn't it? With the, the yeah, bits of Star Wars, yeah. Um, so so uh, having learned all that software, I wanted to know, you kind of want to know what you want to do with it. And the natural thing was to work on your own projects. And that's how we first started working together. Yeah, OK. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, my background, um, I kind of went a different route to Ken. Uh, it, it wasn't really, I suppose, that traditional, because I did a little bit of art college and then went off and painted landscapes and portraits for a bunch of years. Um, but all the time, I'd been working, uh, drawing interpretations of my favorite science fiction stories, turning them into comic strips. Um, I eventually was lucky enough to get um, a job drawing a comic strip uh, called Big Ben, The Man With No Time For Crime, which was the first comic strip I ever did for a company called Warrior in England. Um, all my work, uh, my comic work, which has covered um, a lot of characters over the years, uh, has been uh, international. It hasn't been for anything locally because there wasn't a comic company in Northern Ireland. Um, I worked for 2008 in England, a big science fiction comic doing characters such as Judge Dredd, Rogue Trooper, Tyranny Rex, uh, all science fiction characters in a comic strip form. Um, I then went to work for um, DC Comics in the States. I've totally missed out Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> I, I worked on Transformers for a while for um, British Marvel Comics as well. Um, I then started working in the States for DC Comics doing things such as John Constantine, um, Hellblazer. But what I found was over the years of working in, in uh, working with other writers and doing a lot of the work that I did do, I wanted to do stuff of my own. I wanted to work on my own stories, my own ideas. At the same time, I I started doing film work uh, as well, doing a lot of storyboarding work um, and conceptual artwork while I was working comic strips. This all led to me. Uh, deciding with Ken to work on our own stuff, to, to amalgamate some of the ideas that, that we had into animation ideas and produce uh, animated versions of things that could also be comic strips. In fact, they could be everything. They could be comic strips, games, and animation. So one of the most important things when you're doing this stuff is networking and actually meeting people who are in this business. And it's very difficult to meet people in Northern Ireland. So, um, going to Cannes, brilliant, well, excellent. I was just right. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you were going. Yes. Right, go. <laughs> every, uh, every six months, there's a TV market in the south of France in Cannes. And there you meet um, TV producers and film companies from all over the world. So it's a chance for you to take your ideas and show them around people. So we've been out there three or four times. And I just can't stress enough what a difference it has made to the company because we've met a lot of the people that we're working with now just by going out to Cannes. So um, in terms of meeting animation people in Northern Ireland, it can be very difficult. There's, there's only a few of us doing animation. And we all know each other, and we're all looking for the same pots of cash. But when you go out to Cannes, you meet um, people who will be commissioning animation, and you meet other producers. and. It's just so much benefit. You can't just stress how good it is in terms of meeting people. Where do we get our ideas? It's 
very difficult to come up with an idea, a good idea in isolation. So it really happens best. Maybe you have something that you're thinking of doing, but it, it happens best when you're relaxed. We <laughs> usually take ourselves off to a coffee shop, our local coffee shop for local people. And we, <laughs> <laughs> we sit there for maybe a couple of hours and just fire our ideas at each other. And it really is just chatting about an idea and suddenly someone else will come up with something and interject and um, before you know it, you've got your list of mm. things that you need to use. And we, we have a friend now that we like to bring along with us to mediate between us. And <laughs> he's, even, uh, he's even wackier in, in terms of some of the ideas he throws into our, our projects. He's, so, he's uh, kind of the silent third member. Of <laughs> <laughs> really. We keep him out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> and it really, that is really just the Brewster Bogwater is that yeah, what it is, yeah? The gist of it's how good. we get our ideas, because it's only in that relaxed atmosphere that you can come up with something. I agree, it's nothing more for me to say. If I talk about this character, Nacho, we were asked to um, work on another existing character and update him for the modern, modern audience. Um, but the, the, um, the rights to do it just became too costly and it became more bother than it was worth. Not, not from our side of things, but from the people who were asking us to do it. So they asked us to come up with a similar character um, that would work. Well, then they say, then they take the characteristics of the existing character yeah. and they said, all of these characteristics, we want you to rejumble these and turn them into something completely different, mm -hmm. but the same. But the same. So, so we did. So what do we do? We decide, well, the first character was a mouse. What are we going to do? And we looked at There's things. There's been so many good mice. <laughs> we looked at things that hadn't been done. Now, so we decided on a squirrel. And now there's lots of squirrels. There's lots of squirrels we suddenly there. discovered, <laughs> but there weren't then. So um, that was just the, 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 the jumping off point mm. for coming up with this character. And once again, we decamped to our coffee shop and just threw in all the ideas we, we could think of yeah. and worked out maybe some storylines for the character. I, I, I mean, one of the things with the Rogue Rocket has been serious perseverance over the last couple of years with, mm -hmm. with a lot of our projects. Um, some of the projects that start off in the first year have had to be set aside to go on with some other projects. Other films have come in which have enabled us to make enough money to keep on working. And um, so once we do those things, we go back to our original projects and see how we can progress with them. And they all have, I mean, it, you, you tend to be in something like this for the long haul. It's not something that, that is, um, everything happens instantly. You know, you come up with an idea and, and then tomorrow, there it is, it's finished, it's done. It's something that you tend to know will grow slowly and may change along the route, but you, you know it'll, it, it won't change so much from the initial idea. What it will change is the parameters of how it's produced, yep. I think. Yep. Okay, so mostly um, there's just the two of us working at this company. We do have other people that come and go, but it is very... We tend to bring them in when we need them, don't we? Yeah, we, we bring in freelancers and stuff. Uh, but teamwork is very important. There are certain things that um, well, we sort of complement each other in terms of uh, I would do more of the digital side of stuff, um, um, the colouring, the animation. William will do the, the, um, the artwork and um, storyboards. Um, it just wouldn't work if we, didn't, if we couldn't function together as a team. Success does not happen overnight. Um, it's been a long, hard slog. And do we have success yet? I don't think so. <laughs> but, um, I think... Uh, some success. Perseverance is definitely important. I think, well, with, with me, um, the, as I said before, the desire to just do artwork was kind of its own success in a sense. Uh, I got to do a job where I do what I love to do all the time. Um, and I guess then it's, it's trying to work out what success actually means to an individual. Um, certainly it's not necessarily riches, because we, you know, you, you go through periods of being um, uh, well off with cash and other periods where you're not. But the point is, do you get up in the morning wanting to do the job that you do? I mean, are you, can you enjoy what it is that you do? I can. I mean, it's one of those things that, um, uh, you know, no matter how pressured it is, I mean, there's still something that you're going to be bringing out of your day. There's something that you can create. And... Uh, if it's not in one field, be it animation, it's going to be in, in illustration side or it's going to be in a film side or something. And there's always another project to be working towards. Um, 
And I mean, I think that that's kind of, you know, a success in itself. It's something where, where you know, you're always um, drawn towards doing something. You're not going to be sitting around, you know, waiting to achieve some um, financial reward that lets you stop working. Um, I actually, you know, I, I just want to keep changing, keep moving along, keep doing something new all the time. And I think you need to have that kind of attitude to actually uh, make stuff work. And you, you know, you've got to be prepared to, um, to to take knocks with it as well. I mean, as Ken had said, not everybody's going to like everything you do mm. instantly or ever. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it has to be down to do you enjoy what you do? Do you like what you do? Do you want to do with the thing that you're wanting to do? Um, I think it's most important. The team needs to be relaxed and not uptight, stressed. Um, yeah, a, lot of, a lot of the work that we do is deadline based and things can get pretty hectic towards the end when you're coming up on a big project. Um, but, and it's also not a nine to five job. You find yourself working into the small hours quite a lot of the time. So it's important that everyone it's a lot of trust it's, involved yeah, in sort of in, involves themselves in that spirit because if a lot of the team is working late but someone else decides, right, I'm off, now it's half five, I'm away, it, it's not really going to work, you, you know? On, only if, I mean, the way it works is if you trust the people enough that when they, they come back in, they're actually doing the yeah. stuff that, that, um, uh, that they're meant to be doing. And, and luckily, the little core group that we have now mm -hmm. are all people who, they do put in their time, they, d they do put it in at different hours. I mean, I'm a night worker. I, I've always been a bit of a night worker. No, what I mean, a bit, always <laughs> been a night worker. So um, um, a lot of the time, it's interesting with me because uh, certainly when I, when I work on some of the external jobs, which demand that you work from eight to eight to six or eight to seven, um, you know, it's it's a completely different um, uh, body clock. But when I'm back in with the company, I tend to be somebody that comes in a little bit later, but I work later. Um, I mean, a lot of the time I'll be working to two, three in the morning. Um, but that's because that's when I enjoy it most. Um, and one, one of the things with doing the work, certainly when we set up Rogue Rocket, it was to do stuff that we were interested in, to work on, on ideas that we wanted to do. Now, we have had to take on a lot of other work, um, advertising work, film work, um, other animation work, um, to help us uh, keep in existence, to be able to do the jobs that we want to do. But um, that's, I mean, that's all fine as long as we can get back to what we originally set out to do, which was to do our own work. Um, and I, th I think it's kind of, there's an interesting approach to things because, I mean, well, obviously, I, I guess Ken and I both being more of the creatives, uh, the tendency is to want to enjoy what we do more. I mean, uh, I don't want to work to retire. I want to work because I love what I'm doing and keep on doing it. They'll find me draped over a, a drawing board one day with a pencil clutched in my hand going, this last page, this last page, please.